Please be seated. The court is now back in session. Again, the floor is given to the deputy co-prosecutor to continue putting further questions to the witness. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je... Thank you, Mr. President. I think we will finish in 10 minutes. And of course, uh, there will also be some other questions from the other side. Uh, I will still spend several minutes on the fate of your father to determine what happened to him. And I would like to read in this regard the statements of persons uh, who t spoke about your father. E3 stroke 89, I will interview the Steve Hedder. Uh, 19 December 1997 with Ying Sari, an interview. It is on uh, page uh, 62502 through 04, 00417638239 in the English and in the French, 00332719. Once again, I will read in English because it seems to be a better version than the French. Voilà ce que dit Yang Sari. Here's what Ying Sari says. So then, it was then that Kapok was rising. Kapok and Sun Sen were sent to fight in the east. Then Kapok had a conflict with Sao Pim. Sun Sen wanted to seize power from Sao Pim. So Pim, as I see it, in the end did not join the Yuan. Originally, he has that ID. He spoke Vietnamese during the Five Year War. The Five Year War, yes. But during those three years, he seemed to be clear minded that it was imperative to defend territorial integrity. And then a little further down, he says something about Seng Hong alias Chan. Yang Sari says, he was a good man. They had him shot dead. I was very angry. Question, where did he die? Answer by Yang Sari. In Batambang. He had evacuated and had reached Batambang and they still ordered him to shot to they still ordered him shot to death end of quote et je précise que dans ce passage Yang I would like to clarify that in this passage Yang Seri says that he heard this uh, but he was not present at the execution of your father first of all what is your reaction to the fact that Yang Sari says that Sao Pim did not join the Yun, but quite to the contrary, he defended the integrity of the territory throughout the three years of the regime of democratic Kampuchea. have any view about that. However, regarding the events unfolded on the 25th May 1978, Sapram was located in Punyikrai district, the Bongkmum province, which is now currently known, and it was adjacent to the uh, Cambodia-Vietnam border. I uh, did not understand why Sapam did not flee to Vietnam and why he decided to communicate uh, with uh, Phnom Penh. That is my understanding of the situation. Still regarding what Yang Seri says in this section when he's speaking of your father, he thinks that he was killed in Batambang. 
at the time when the Khmer Rouge forces were evacuating the country towards the northwest. According to your information, what you've been able to gather, is it possible that your father survived until the beginning of 1979? I did not know about that. Even until today, when I'm asked uh, whether about whether my father uh, uh, survived the ordeal, and my response is that I still do not know whether he is alive or he uh, deceased. Yeah, another passage. There is another passage which I would like to read. It's what Steve Heder said about your father. It's contained in document E3-4650. It's an interview of Nun Saret by Steve Heder. It was an exchange with Nun Saret. 3689 Two is the page in English in Khmer, 00392125226, and in French, 00463029230. And I will quote what Steve Heder says. À ma connaissance, to my knowledge, uh, Mr. Chun, he also was arrested by Pol Pot. If it was not the end of 1978, it would have been at the beginning of early 1979. We have many evidence supporting this information because there are many documents. And at the end, he says that the nom Chan appears in many tool slang confessions, and he adds this. On the other hand, so during the year 1990 and the 1990s, I met with Kyo Sampan once. And during that meeting, I asked him, where is Ta Chan now? And based on Kyo Sampan's answer at that time, I understood that Ta Chan was not alive. Because when he answered me, he said, and I quote, this contemptible, we lost a track of this contemptible Chan, end quote. And Steve Heder continues, for my part, when I heard Kyu Sampan called him this contemptible Chan, he continued to call him, continually called him the contemptible. If he called him the contemptible, the contemptible, then that person was also considered as a traitor, right? The third, I also went to the Khmer Rouge leaders along the border, and among them there were also some cadres or soldiers from the East Zone and who are still alive. All of these people unanimously said that they had not seen him again, that he had disappeared since the end of late 1978, end quote. Witness, do you have a reaction to what Steve Hedder said in this passage? And to be complete, I would like to clarify that Noon Saret was the interviewee, and he said that in 1980, your, he thought that your father was still alive. Do you have any reaction to what Steve Hedder said that he was certainly dead by late 1978 or the use of the word contemptible to describe him? I still uh, believe my previous statements that I made. If he uh, died, I did not know where he died. 
and if he is alive, then where he is living? As I said, I do not know whether he is dead or he is alive. And if he is alive, I do not know where he lives. And certainly, if I believe he is still alive, then I would try to find him. Quelques questions pour terminer sur. Some questions to conclude on the Chen. You spoke before the investigating judge in the East Zone and in particular along the Mekong River and in Sector 21 where you worked. How were the Chems treated from 1975 on? not sure about uh, the period. However, at the Svai Kleng uh, commune in Kuchma district and uh, Gopal village in Kuchma district, which was located on an island, There were many Islam people uh, living there. They usually lived along the river bank. There was an event where many uh, workers in Sector uh, 21 knew that there was a rebellion by the Islam people to oppose the, the Khmer Rouge government at the time. I heard about that uh, rebellion uh, spearheaded by the Islam people to oppose the uh, local authority in the Kuchma district. And what happened to these Cham? In particular, those who rebelled at Kuo Plain Saiking? Did they suffer repression measures? Colonel. I did not know uh, about the uh, suppression. However, before that, uh, Islam people had been evacuated uh, to many areas within uh, Sector 21. So they were relocated uh, to some locations within the same uh, sector. Par la suite, que vous avez appris Afterwards, did you learn if some of these Muslims were displaced to other zones than the East Zone, I am thinking of the North and the Northwest in particular. I did not grasp the situation at the time. I knew that Islam people were sent uh, to live in Dambai district, that is along the road to Dambai leading to Rumche a commune, May Mod district, which was my native uh, uh, district. They did not uh, live in the uh, current, in the uh, established villages, but they were uh, instructed to live along the roads and that new villages would be established for them. I would like to read what you said in the co before the co-investigating uh, judges, E3531. Uh, you said at that time of the Kopal revolt, the purges were really practiced on the Chang people because all of those who worked in Sector 21 knew about this. 
and then in response, uh, answer 53, you also said, I knew that after the purge on Paul Island, Cham people were less trusted and discriminated against. Many more Cham people were evacuated from villages. We were informed to be cautious when walking through Cham villages. Do you confirm what you said? That on the one hand, there were purges against the Cham, and on the other hand, that they were discriminated against. Because at that time, there was a, a rebellion by the Islam people who were not armed with weapons but they had their swords and knives. And it could be said that uh, the other side uh, had the weapons and we, we could say that that uh, event uh, could be result of uh, internal conflicts since uh, the Islam people and the Khmer people went along rather well in their uh, daily activity and previously they were not uh, mistreated. But uh, I believed uh, they were mistreated by the local authorities and that they could no longer stand it. And concerning this mistreatment, and this will be my last question to the Kampuchea Communist Party, want to assimilate the Cham into the Khmer by forbidding them from practicing their religion or speaking their language, practicing their traditions or being able to uh, use their clothing on their holidays. Was there a desire to assimilate the Cham so that we could no longer n know who was Cham and who was Khmer in the democratic Kampuchea regime? whether there was a principle or not regarding them. I never received uh, such a principle and I never saw any written document uh, to that effect. Let alone the Islamic religion, even the majority of uh, people who were Buddhist, they were not allowed to practice uh, their uh, religious belief, like what they are enjoying now. Thank you, Mr. President. I think the Civil Party lead callers will have some questions in the remaining time. Thank you. And I'd like to hand the floor now to the lead co-lawyers for civil parties. But some of Lawyer for civil parties, SQ, Mr. President. In the interest of time, allow me to uh, start. Good afternoon, Your Honours. Good afternoon, everyone in and around the courtroom. My name is Lao Chun Ti. I'm a lawyer for civil parties. And good afternoon, Mr. Witness. I have a few uh, supplementary questions uh, to put to you. When you came to attend study sessions in Phnom Penh, how many of you came together? 
and so they were through us, uh, the other person named Leo. Question, thank you. And the person who came along with you, did he continue uh, working with you until the fall of the regime in 1979? Answer. After the event that unfolded on 25th May 1978, we separated from one another. However, I met him in 19, after 1979. However, uh, later on, he became sick and died. Question. I move on to another uh, topic. Did you personally ever see or meet Southam? Answer Yes, I met him. I met Southam. Question Can you tell the chamber under which condition you met Southam and where? Answer I met him at uh, his house in Suong village, Suong commune, Bong Khmum district, Bong Khmum province. Previously, it was a uh, part of Kampong Cham province. Question. Uh, before you decided to go to see him, what were the issues that urged you to go and see him? Answer. There were problems, uh, and then the chief saw, and uh, senior people in the unit decided uh, to go and seek a guideline from the PUM so that Yen Sophie would not continue uh, to arrest uh, our members. Question. And when you met Sao Prem, can you recall what he said at the time? Answer. Before I venture to meet him, That it after my superior saw didn't dare to go and assigned me instead. I went to uh, seek uh, advice from Pim, and that Pim said he did not have uh, any authority to uh, decide on the matter, and he suggested that I should go and see Sapam myself. He also uh, said that this is uh, it was uh, unprecedented. Question. Thank you, and allow me to ask you another question, and it may be my last. This is in relation to your father. You said that uh, you uh, met him when more time and it was the last time that you met him can you be a bit more specific where did you meet him and what did he tell you at the time answer he didn't say much i uh, met him when his uh, vehicle was about to board a ferry at uh, Nha Luong to cross the, ri the river to continue his journey to Phnom Penh what he said was that he was about to go to Phnom Penh, and that was all. Question, uh, thank you. Also in relation to your uh, father, and you were asked by the uh, co-prosecutor that so far you have not received any information to, from him. Can you tell the chamber whether uh, you still believe that he is still alive? 
answer I as I said I am not sure whether he is alive or he is dead I am in the dark here and if I know for certain that he is alive then I would go looking for him and if I know that he is dead then I would take my siblings to go there in order to exhume his uh, remains Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, uh, witness. President, thank you. The chamber would like to hand the floor now to the defense teams. First, to the defense team for Nunji to put questions to this witness. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Witness. Um, Mr. President, with your leave, I would like um, to start my questioning with showing some footage uh, to the witness. Um, I earlier sent an email, and it is the footage that is contained in um, recording E3 slash 3015R. And um, I would like to show um, uh, the first two minutes and 19 seconds. Um, but while I'm saying this, I just realized that I don't think we have a pre uh, informed VAV unit beforehand. Um, so I'm not quite sure if they are capable of doing this themselves. Um, if not, then I will reserve my questions till tomorrow. Um. Bakang, uh, AV. AV unit personnel, you are ready to play the video clip as requested by the defense team for uh, Nguyen Chia, that is Council uh, Copper. And please advise the chamber whether you are able to play the clip. And if not, then the council may move on to another topic and uh, the video clip can be played tomorrow. President, uh, the AV unit personnel has not uh, prepared the uh, clip yet as it they need time to search for the relevant clip. So, Councilor Copper, please uh, leave uh, this uh, video clip for tomorrow and move on to another topic. Yes, uh, no problem, um, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Witness, um, I would like to start um, with asking you something about um, uh, testimony you gave to the investigating judge. Um, and I think um, I should read it to you um, because I'm not quite sure um, what you meant when you said this. Mr. President, this is his uh, statement, E3 slash 5531. And uh, it's question and answer um, uh, 66. Um, Mr. Witness, you're speaking about um, your father. Um, presumably, you're speaking about um, the period in 1979. And then you say in 66 uh, the following. Let me quote you. Uh, t two months later, I came to meet my father face to face in uh, Chukak. He told me, uh, don't speak about the previous things in Sector 21. Instead, he told me to say I was a farmer at Kampong Trobek farm in Dambon Plo. He also told me to tell his former subordinates not to say anything 
and to show ignorance of sector 21 and all should say that they used to be farmers at Kampong uh, Throwback end of quote first of all Mr. Witters do you re recall saying this to the investigator Man. yes I uh, refer to a period of two months after the event of 25th May 1978. I was found by people who worked for my father and I was taken to Chukaja to uh, meet him. And he advised me uh, about those things that you uh, quoted, because people who were with him, they were not his uh, previous uh, bodyguards. Some said he placed them with the uh, bodyguards uh, from his side. Previously, my father had uh, to bodyguards who escorted him and they were replaced by two bodyguards assigned by Sun Sen. And he instructed me not to speak uh, about anything uh, from uh, Sector 21. And if asked, I should tell that I uh, was from Kampung Tro Bai since there was a, a big farm in Kampung Tro Bai uh, district in Sector 24. People who uh, fled uh, at the area, they came to uh, work in the rice fields in that uh, farm. Um, I understand, but um, what exactly was it that your uh, father um, was trying to conceal? Um, what was what was it that you had to show ignorance of? Which, which facts, which events? Thank you. That happened to those who lived with him. I do not know what happened to the defense guards. I was advised not to say anything about the matters for the sake of security, personal security. As far as you are concerned, back in the period, uh, if uh, we happened to know much, it was very difficult to live through the regime. Um. Let me continue a bit on this because I, I still um, am not able to understand which previous things, uh, which specific things were you uh, told not to speak about? Uh, was it the 25 May events? Um, was it um, the rebellion of the charm? Was it uh, anything else? The things that had happened before we reached Chukai, the idea of my father was to encourage me not to allow others that uh, we knew some things that happened uh, in the East Zone uh, before 25 of May 1978. In fact, uh, we were working the field at the bike. Uh, that is Sector 24, not Sector 21.
Um, let me move to another subject, uh, Mr. Witness, and um, that was just mentioned um, in the question by the prosecution, and that is the um, uh, the rebellion in uh, Svai Kleng and, and Kolpal. Uh, you spoke briefly about it. Um, um, you said it was a rebellion to oppose uh, the local government. Um, do you know uh, when it started? Um, who, if any, was behind the rebellion? Do you, do you know some details about uh, what happened in 74 and 75? about the rebellion, but did not know how it happened. Those who travel along Mekong River from Chlong to Krochma up to Piem Chiliang were advised to be cautious. We were told that most Cham people intended to rebel. We were not advised to do anything to those uh, people, but we were warned to be cautious. Um, let me ask it differently. Do you, do you remember who it was that was in charge of uh, the district um, to which Swai Kling and Kopal belonged, and Krautschmar, who was in charge at the time of the crushing of the rebellion? I have told the court already, in uh, that district I know an individual by the name Pa. However, I do not know when exactly he was arrested. And I do not know whether he was still the chief of uh, Krochma district during the period of the conflicts uh, in relation to Jam people. Um, do you know whether your father uh, had anything to do with um, the crushing of the rebellion? Was he somehow involved? Thank you. I do not know about that. Thank you. Do you know whether uh, Sao Pim was in charge during the time that uh, the rebellion was crushed? Mark, can you All I know is that Sao Pum became chief of uh, the zone after the coup d'etat in 1970, up until the time when uh, he was accused of being a traitor by the center. Um, earlier today, you said. Um your father became um, the number two of the zone next to Sao Pim in 74. Are you sure about that date, about that year?
He was the deputy chief. He was the deputy of Sao Pum. Uh, from late 1974. Um, so that would be about four or five months before the liberation of Phnom Penh, correct? I am sure that uh, he had already uh, become the deputy chief of uh, the zone, East Zone, on the 17th April 1975. Um, do, you, do you know which forces were used um, in October, November 75 to crush the rebellion in uh, Swai Kleng and Kopal? Were these district forces? Were these um, uh, sector forces? Were these zone forces? Do you know anything about this? I do not know which forces from uh, which zone crushed uh, the rebellion. What I know is that in the zone, is zone there were uh, soldiers in the district, commune, and uh, zone level. And during the time, I do not, I did not know which forces came to purge uh, those people. Uh, Mr. President, I believe that uh, by now the AV unit is ready uh, to show um, uh, the, t the first two minutes and 19 seconds of E3 slash 3015R. So with your leave, I would like to show that to the witness. Bye. Hi. Right. Out. President, every unit, please screen the, the video clip as requested by the defense team for Mr. Nguyen Chia.
next witness. I hope you were able to to see the footage well. Um, my first question to you is, do, did you recognize anyone on that video? I could recognize uh, Pol Pot's face. He's, uh, he, he wrapped uh, his chroma or scarf around his neck. And uh, he uh, was participating in an event, and I have seen uh, these, uh, the photos of him after 1979. Is there anyone else that you recognize uh, on this, uh, in this footage, Mr. Witness? I could not uh, see clearly. I could only see Pol Pot's face uh, very clearly, but not the other people. Um, is that because of, of you having difficulty um, s seeing this film? Would you like us or the, the chamber to have it play it again, Mr. Witness? No need. Even if the video is played uh, once again, I could not uh, see the faces uh, very clearly, and m I do not uh, recognize most of them. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bit surprised with that answer, Mr. Mr. Witness, because it seems that Pol Pot um, was walking uh, next to Sao Pim, uh, and I believe Sao Pim was clearly uh, t to be seen in the footage. Um, are, are you sure you didn't recognize Sao Pim? I could not recognize him. Sao Pim that I had met close to the uh, event in 1978, uh, back at that period. He uh, was uh, rather old, and he has shaved uh, his hair. Did you recognize uh, Von Vett on the video? <laughs> but I'm sorry, I could not recognize him. Um, Mr. Witness, this might be footage uh, of Sao Pim um, receiving Pol Pot in the East Zone uh, at a rubber plantation in early 1978. Um, do you know anything about Pol Pot and possibly Von Vett visiting Sao Pim in the East Zone early 78? at the rubber plantations? I do not know about that. Um, there was another person um, that you could see uh, speaking on the video, uh, Mr. Witness, between uh, one minute, 54, and two minute. Um, Mr. President, with your leave, I've made a still uh, of that um, footage with the person speaking, and um, I would like to show uh, the photo of that, uh, or the still to the witness and ask him whether he recognizes the person that one can see between one minute, 54, and two minutes.
President, yes, please, every unit, uh, please show the video clip as requested by Council Copy, said the President. And court, if, court officer, please uh, take the document and give it to the witness. Um, I saw you simultaneously look at the photo and, and, the, and the footage. If, if you didn't see it clearly, uh, I'm, I'm sure it can be played again. Mr. Witness, can you have a look at the photo or alternatively at the footage uh, between 1.54 and 2 minutes? Still, I am not sure who he is. After I have looked uh, at the uh, physical copy of your photo and uh, video clip, I am not quite sure whether he is uh, my father, Jan, and I am not sure whether the location of the meeting. Um, we're also not entirely un sure, but uh, could this be someone called Heng Samrin? I am not sure. So, because uh, this person looks uh, very different from the uh, the individual you named. Um, did you know at the time who Heng Samrin was? He was part of uh, military of the East uh, Zone. And do you know um, what his position in the East Zone military hierarchy was in early 1978? about him a little on. I know that before 1978, he was a divisional commander number five of the East Zone. And, and do you know whether he was a, a member of the general staff of the East Zone? President, please hold on, Mr. Winners. You may proceed now, International Deputy Co Prosecutor. Thank you, Mr. President. I believe I understood uh, from the previous answer by the witness uh, that he did not know back then uh, who Heng Samrin was, and then he learned it. So I think in each question, 
a distinction should be made between the moment when um, he must have learned that information regarding that person because apparently this does not transpire from the answers uh, it does not transpire from the answers of the witness that he knew him back then um, I, I think in the English uh, that was uh, what the witness said but I'm happy to uh, ask read confirmation um, Mr. Witness did you know uh, at the time before 1979 what the position was in the military hierarchy of the east zone of Heng Samrin? It was after 1979 that I saw him and after that year, I learned that he was one, a member of military in the East Zone. Before that time, I did not know this individual. As I said, uh, no one in the regime used uh, surname or full name. Uh, we used only first name or alias names. Um, did you know? At the time, before 79, uh, another high-ranking East Zone military person called Chan Chakrai. I do not know him yet. I have heard of his name and that he was one, uh, the uh, chief of military as well in the zone. I did not see him or meet him personally back then. Have you ever heard um, that um, Chan Chakrai, uh, together with your father, um, were selected to be um, revolutionary role models in 1974? I have no idea and I haven't heard of it. This is the first time that I have heard from you. Um, my, my last question is present for the break. Um, I'm, I'm, this information comes from a, a statement E3 slash 387 from a person called um, Uk Bun Chun. Have you ever heard of someone called Uk Bun Chun? Yes, I have heard of his name and I have known this individual. Thank you. Um, this, this question this might be an appropriate time to, uh, to break. President, thank you. It is now time for the adjournment. And the chamber will resume its hearing tomorrow on Thursday, 30th of June 2016 at 9 a.m. Tomorrow the chamber is scheduled to continue hearing the testimony of Ms. Wuen. Please be informed and please be on time. Tomorrow there is no reserved witness. And West Unis uh, has ordered the reserve the witness uh, 976 uh, today. So please uh, send uh, the, this witness back to the place where he wishes to go. Mr. Mir Wun, the hearing of your testimony has not come to an end yet. You are invited to come here once again to testify tomorrow. I am grateful to you as well, UD Council Sok <laughs> Sojita. You are also invited to come to attend uh, 
the hearing of the testimony of this witness as well. Court officers, please, please work with the vessel unit uh, to send uh, this witness to the place where he is staying at the moment, and please invite him back into the courtroom tomorrow at 9 a.m. Security personnel are instructed to bring Nguyen Chien Kiu Zumpon back to the ECCC's detention facility and have them returned into the courtroom before 9 a.m. The court is now adjourned.